This episode of Speakers of Fidelin is made possible by our generous patrons. Special thanks to our supreme and master speakers, Omage Cat Comet, Erizu Yamakawa, Circuit Barakil, Remy Asalia, Arcadia Lunashine, Alex Franco AV, Winebow Brood, Psyche, Asuta Starbreeze, Cletus Oreo, Nina Grimstotter, Nat Clay, Lily Black, Bob Cece, Mikta Rabentau, Sapa Chakwatol, Edwin, Umbral Wind, Quick Levin, Pamela Isley, Camille Grinnell, Elenriel Maximus, Codrith Novelis, Mira Mary, Bay Barbale, Suno Chicano, Celestau Notrell, Lazy Boy, A Bag of Dragonite, Luke Osborne, Pandalu Storm Arrow, Tex, Yowie Wowie, Kai Lin, AJ Brainswordson, Anathus Moonscar, Arthur Law, Beridan Derard, and Saipup. Support the show and become a patron today at patreon.com slash speakersxiv. Thank you. This is Speakers of Violence. Good evening, Aorsians. Welcome to Speakers of Heidelin, episode 285. I'm Lukeel Bravestone, and I'm joined today by Mail of Anadar and Georgi Wiston. Uh, hello, hello. Welcome. Uh, it is uh, February 5th, 2022. Yes, we have entered the, the sacred month of February, which is a busy month for video games, because there's a lot of games coming out uh, today. Not today, but this month <laughs> and the next. Um so, um, yeah, uh, we've, um, <laughs> maybe I should just mention that there's, there's a mystery. If you're wondering why there's no, okay, there's two mysteries that we still have to figure out. And one of them is, uh, my close-up doesn't work right now. Uh, my camera literally will not cut to the close-up. Uh, and second, every time we're about to go live, Georgi's camera turns into this. Yeah. So I feel like I've got a cataract when I look at him. Yeah. So <laughs> I don't know about that. That's weird. Um, but that, uh, there you have it. Anyways, uh, this is episode 285. Our main uh, topic today is a great discussion. <sighs> what and how much does Azem know about us? That is the great discussion. Uh, and we'll, of course, talk about the upcoming live letter. Um, and we'll be reading your mog mail, speakersxiv.com slash mog mail. Remember to send us mog mail. Stay tuned for the post show. Uh, we'll be answering questions from the syndicate. Uh, so stay tuned for that as well. All right, that's it. Let's uh, jump into uh, recent events. That's right. And in recent events, uh, letter from the producer live. We have a date. Um, we have a date. It's February uh, 18th, which is oh. a, a lot. For Americans, it's actually February 19th for all of us. Yes. Mm -hmm. February 19th for Europe and um, Australia. Um, 6 p.m. Uh, PST, and I believe it is 2 a.m. GMT, 3 a.m. Yeah. Central European, and 1, 1 p.m. Australia time. Um, Australia they have Eastern that information. Daylight time. Yeah, I don't know they why they that chucked that in now. on the European lodestone. Get your own lodestone. Because they get off our lodestone. Because they're European. Default, <laughs> because they default us to your uh, lo yeah. your mug station. Yeah. Ah. I'm fine with that. It would be a they in stupid to have another lodestone. Yeah. I they guess. encourage us to per to pay for our account in euros slash pounds. Hmm. I see. That's I okay. see. Um, yes, so um, uh, February 18th, it's a big one, because the uh, the title of the live uh, letter, it's not the title, but one of the details they revealed is that it's going gonna, it's gonna to talk about the next 10 years of Final Fantasy XIV. Um, yeah. Uh, there's also an Endwalker Q&A, which you can submit uh, questions to uh, on the designated thread on the official forum, so go to your lodestone uh, post and click the th the link to the thread there. Um, mm -hmm. um, Q and A details. If you've been playing Endwalker, now is the time to submit your questions about the latest expansion in fourteen. Questions will be forwarded to Yoshida, who will field as many as possible during the broadcast. So nice. Mm -hmm. 
This is a live letter number 68, yeah. So this is before the greatest one. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. Oh, one more. Um, so, um, what do we think it's about the next important. 10 years? Yeah, it's much bigger. It's a very important letter. detail what? you should include. It'll be, it has live interpretation. Yeah, English which means Japanese. the live letter will be about eight hours long. <laughs> so yeah. please look forward to it, everyone. But that means it's going to be very important. Yes, yes. But last mm -hmm. time, but does that mean? Yeah. Does that mean that going forward, all of them will get live? I think, may, I this think is the, so. Because this is the first one that's not specifically about the expansion. Yeah, I think this is. I would like that. I think this is the standard now because. Um, Mm -hmm. I guess they didn't care that much before <laughs> because we figured it out. But now there's so many new players that don't know how to like watch a live letter because you need before you needed to know how to watch a live letter. Like you needed to know <laughs> where the translations were coming in. You had to be like, which mm -hmm. chat will I be watching? Uh, do I watch like a podcast like that is covering it? Um, but now they're making it easier for the common man uh, to watch by having live translation. Unfortunately, it doubles the broadcast time. So, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> yeah, that this the fact that this is the future for us, that every live letter is going to be like twice as long. <clears throat> it's going to be it's a it's a, an interesting future for us. Yeah, uh, well, triples it if they have to do it into Australian as well. <laughs> Imagine if they well, had I... to have like one translator for each like official supported language, like a French, well, a German, and French and German. As well. yeah. In fairness, it is unfair that there isn't that. <sighs> well, they don't care about Europe. French no. and German is European language. I mean, it is unfair. Third, yeah, don't care about them. We're lucky that this gets a German and French translation at all, to be honest. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Um... Maybe the community teams should all like rebroadcast it at the same time and do translations over it for like well that sounds German. difficult to time yeah um anyways yeah so next 10 years of 14 is very very interesting i wonder mm -hmm. i have many quest many questions and also um makes it more likely that we're going to see some more island sanctuary stuff maybe you think we're going to see it this week uh this upcoming uh, live letter yeah at least they mention really? I think it, it Oh, I think we might see a mention of it, but I don't think they're going to go into detail until the one that actually covers, like, 6.1. I don't think there's much they can even say. Mm. Next 10 years? What, just, oh, we're going to continue to do it? Yeah, because how long are they going to do eight hours of the next 10? We're not going to get tell you what 6.1 is, but here's 6.2, 6.3, 6.4, 4, 5. They might have, like, goals for, like, we want to have a uh, female... Hrothgar out by this point. We want to have a certain oh, no. amount of jobs by now. Stuff like that. Oh. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. But it's it's hard to... I mean, it's gonna be they're boring. not going to tell us much about the story, probably. They're not going to tell us much about the No, obviously. They're, going they're not going to tell us about story, but... Hmm. Well, I don't know. I We've never had anything like this before. The next 10 years. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. I, if they talk also, about engine upgrades, I'm actually going to shit myself. Okay, that's a clean cut as well. So. Fuck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I also think they might reiterate all the information they gave us about the data centers in that lodestone post. Ah, uh, I hope so. And ah, uh, they could explain how data center travel is going to work. Yes. They might, Again, yeah, they they might also go into greater detail about like the potential of like global data center travel. Oh yeah. Have, they have That's said fine. that that is doable for them. They're just deciding yeah. whether or not it's something that people want, and I don't know why they just why they think people don't want it. Mm -hmm. But it's our it's cultures will clash. I think it's specifically because the Japanese culture doesn't. Japanese people don't want us affecting their market boards. No, that's probably true. Yeah. Um, My understanding is that Japanese market boards are significantly lower than Western ones. Ah, oh, that's fair. They they don't want to be too greedy with their pricing. It's like mm. they don't want all yeah. the Western people coming in, taking up their cheap produce, and then bumping up the prices globally. <laughs> well, surely that we'll would see. mean that all prices would start to fluctuate and go down as a result, though. If it, the Japanese market, I mean, it will it'll reach a middle. Well, that's the dream: is that all the prices will eventually reach a a common like line. Will all be at yeah, the but they don't want that. 
they want to stay low already, Lukiel. They don't want to have to increase their guild spending. Classic. Classic. Okay. Leave them be. Yeah, we can talk about two or three hours of data center travel. <laughs> Short break for smoking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then merchandise, I guess. All, all the merchandise we can't buy. Yeah. Emmett Salk merch. Because mm-hmm. 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 they can do that now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a weird one. I, I'm both excited but also worried that it's going to be dry and boring. Um, like, Yeah, it's, it's so hard to know what it would be because, like. Because they have to be vague. I mean, if they're going to talk about mm-hmm. anything like past 6.1, I mean, obviously they can't like go into detail. Um, I am cautiously optimistic. I'm yeah. hopeful. Yeah. Okay. But if it's rubbish, the next one's going to be good. Yes, that's true. To be honest... Even if the, this like outline of the next ten years is not the most interesting thing, we still are getting an Endwalker Q and A, which should be relatively interesting lore wise. That's true. Yeah, could be some reveals and stuff. Mm-hmm. Maybe he'll tell us what the platinum meant. <laughs> <laughs> You're still on that. <laughs> uh, yeah. So just to sp- clarify, this uh, this live letter isn't uh, about six point one, which is another. Oh. I mean, okay, so that that sort of because usually we have two live letters before a patch that are about the patch. There's six point one, mm. like yes. the point something part one and point point p- something part two, uh, yeah. and then usually the patch drops uh, t- a week or two after the last live letter. Mm-hmm. When is this patch gonna drop? Now, do you think, based on this, now that we have this live letter I- now? I genuinely think not until early April at the earliest. Yeah. I was, yeah, early April. Yeah, it's starting to look like. I'm not it. totally against that though. Mm. Yeah, because it's nice hurry, to have right a, a gap after like a, the major end, and there's other stuff you can catch up on. And yeah, yeah. Our first loads of other games. Our first guesstimate was like early March, I think, and then it moved to mm-hmm. end of March when we start when we heard about this live letter. But now that we know that this live letter isn't even about six point one, I feel like it's likely. Yeah, it's early April probably. So they have yeah. said that there is specifically going to be a six point one live letter in March. I yes, think they said mm-hmm. early. I think they said early March. I think so. Yeah. So, but early March could be the first two weeks for them, like like the last like. The second week is still early March for them, so mm. and then usually two weeks between live letters as well, I think. So two or three yeah. weeks. I, sometimes it's I feel like there's no is there a pattern to the live letters? The earliest I think you'd get it is the twenty ninth of March, but I think it's gonna yeah. be April, probably twelfth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um anyways, so uh, m- end of March, early April, I think, is uh around the time we'll get the next patch. Uh, but don't worry, uh, there's uh, there's plenty of do in game, and there is more coming on February eighth. Valentine's Day is back. Uh, Tuesday, hey. uh, February eighth, um, is lasting until Justice Monday. Justice for Bert. <laughs> for Monday, <laughs> February twenty first. So um, yeah, we don't really have any information as usual uh, about what the event's going to be about but we do have the there's rewards there's a clue there's a clue in the reward in the picture yes a little post there's a post moogle maybe we're delivering love letters by the looks of it <clears> along <throat> with that horrible child that's true <laughs> <laughs> yeah we do have Bert's the career <laughs> We have the, the very typical uh, nondescript description on the official site. Lisette de Valention has her mitts full this Valentine's Day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. True, but yes. delivered with care as a tagline. I mean, yeah. we're obviously going to be giving out presents and love letters and stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, we get barding. We get one of those cutscenes where we go left, right, <laughs> left, talk yes. to an NPC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. Left, we do right. get a barding. That we is get a barding, yeah. When was the last time we got a, from a seasonal event? When was the last time that happened? Easter years ago, maybe. I can't the remember. The Easter one, that's so long ago. Is that the last time? Yeah, I guess so. Did we get a oh, winter? Did, yeah, I was gonna say did we get did we get yeah, did we get a Starlight one? Not this point? year. Was it last year or the year it before? Definitely it's wasn't this year. Time. It might have been the year before. Yeah. We don't get bodies very often and it's a shame. But then they abandoned the companion system, really, so... Yeah. Hey, I still always summon my companion when I'm in the overworld, so I appreciated it. 
Well, I like using him as a mount if I can, because I went to all the effort of dyeing him white, <laughs> and I like well. the barding system. I was so annoyed that that wasn't my legacy chocobo, and I just, it's weird <laughs> for me to, like, call that one and be like, but that's not my real chocobo. Um, yeah. Uh, I use I it when agree. I level. Yeah, go on. Mm -hmm. I do agree that it's kind of a tease to make this like a post moogle themed Valentine's Day when we still don't have any more post moogle like quests. Not since Arana true. Born. That's true. No. I'm still waiting. Yeah. And they're ones that I sort of saved because I know how good they're going to be. They're mm. like a. They're very I enjoyable. Like they give. They give color to the world. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. I really think that is something they should have done more of. Same with it. Hildebrand should be brought back, which we know he will, and Moogle yeah. Quest should be brought back. Mm -hmm. um, the other award, reward even, uh, is um, a mobile. Another one. Mm -hmm. Yay. It's the Yay. year of mobiles. Yay. Remember when it was the year of orchestrian roles? Yeah. <sighs> Love, look at that, Lucio. Ooh. Another mobile. <laughs> they have found like another thing they can reskin and pack into like events i don't understand the appeal of mobiles i mean it's for it's supposed to hang over like a, a crib it's really fucking massive if you look at it compared to the um oh, unending yeah. journey that it's placed above yeah it is huge um, it shouldn't hang off a wall should be hanging a from the ceiling. Should be a ceiling hanging thing i don't yeah. think we i don't think we can place no. ceiling things no, other than lights yeah so uh, it's automatically bad. Weird. So, yeah. oh, Do well. people just hang mobiles around? Is this like a new housing trend that I'm not aware of? That you hang mobiles? Like in real life? Yeah, in real life. Because uh, I've only seen know. them over like babies, like cribs. That's what a mobile is I, to me. The closest thing I see regularly is like wind chimes. Yeah, but surely wind chimes are different. That We already have wind chimes. They are right? different. Yeah. Because this is like, I don't know, I understand the decorative value of this <laughs> but whatever i guess um, I mean, they do hang up similar things during like seasonal like the equivalent of seasonal events in real life like during I the guess. christmas season you see well, things true. like this yeah that's true i forgot that this i mean one has yeah, like uh, little swirly hearts like that ice cream brand mm, yeah <laughs> Yes, yes, it does. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, streets. Yeah, is that what it's called? Walls here, I think. Yeah, different in most countries, isn't it? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, so there you go. Valentine's Day, February 8th till yeah. February 21st. So make sure it'll be a you quick one, I think. Probably, yeah, probably. Mm -hmm. We just got a more in depth one. Yeah, yeah. I don't mind. Valentine's Day, <laughs> I mean, wrong. the most recent one we got was made last year and they only just mm, released it yeah so. true 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 um all right moving on uh final fantasy 14 has been nominated by south by southwest gaming awards 2022 for game so these are pretty big game of the year excellence mm. in narrative and excellence in original score so that's pretty those are pretty high like these are mm. big uh, awards to be nominated. For. How this... often? Sorry? Yes, is this award, is, is this like, it says for Gaming Awards 2022, but is it for games that have been released? It's from 2021. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. that's fine. Because I was going to say it's a bit early. <laughs> yeah, that's early. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. Um, and it's, I also like that it's, these are awards uh, that are not just like, because I feel like in other award shows, 14 is like relegated to the still playing or long timer mm. or old fart but here it's like mm. uh, on the same level as all other games because it's still an active game so i like that um it's crazy like how often do mmos get like nominated for game of the year awards yeah, exactly or excellence in narrative which you know mmo <laughs> there or are mmos with good narratives but i mean some mmos have very thin stories okay. Or even original score. Like, MMOs have some right. of the largest libraries of music simply because of the fact that they, like, have to keep adding to them, and they very rarely get appreciated. Yeah. So this is really cool. Yeah. So can... Yeah. We're up against It Takes Two, Psychonauts 2, Ratchet and Clank, Rift Apart, and Resident <clears throat> Evil Village for Game of the Year. Wow. Mm -hmm. I think they've got a pretty good chance. Yeah? Yeah? Yeah. Um, 
make sure to vote on the website I, if you want to. I want. I I guess the one of the reasons why fourteen is always like put in the category of like still playing, and like community and all that bullshit is because, for a game to be nominated to like excellence in narrative, it means the. <laughs> I'm going to call them the Academy, but they are not. Whatever, whoever, the the jury will have to have, you know, in some way played, played the game and played mm -hmm. the story. Yeah. And that's a lot of story to go through. So I'm mm -hmm. assuming that means they have. Um, mm -hmm. And that shows how popular 14 is right now. That's probably what ma made this possible. This, mm -hmm. like, surge. For an excellence in narrative, we're against Deathloop, Kenna, Bridge of Spirits, Lost in Random, which I've never heard of, and Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy. Excellence in narrative? Have you watched how cring that one was? If that wins. You know Guardians well, of the Galaxy won the Game of the Year, You won the Video Game Awards, a narrative award. Awful. I know you don't care about them, kill, but people are very high on the story for Marvel's the Marvel's Guardian of the Galaxy video game. Oh. I'm not saying anything. I'm not saying anything. <laughs> <laughs> As uh, for excellence in original score, we're up against the Artful Escape, Kenner Bridge of Spirits, The Medium, and Witchwood. I think we're by far the most high-profile game in that list. Yeah, 100%. yeah. Um, okay, so there you go. You can go vote. I think voting is open now. So um, Yeah, mm -hmm. this is on um, the 8th, I think, February the 8th. Mm -hmm. I put the link in the chat, and Lakia will probably put it in the description for the video as well. Yeah, hopefully... The episode is out by so you'll if not it's on the on the last day. Ooh, it might be. Well, we'll see. You'll see if it's past <laughs> the eighth. Uh, it's too late. Um, all right, uh, that's um, that's recent events. Uh, let's jump into some mog mail. Our first mog mail is from, oh boy, it's from Tristanix from Moogle. Oh. Uh, Endwalker oh. finally brought closure. Frenchman. <laughs> Endwalker mm -hmm. finally brought closure to the Hydaelyn and Zodiac saga. Good. Both gods were defeated and passed on, or did they? Dun dun dun. Even no, with the dun, main dun dun do. Dun, dun, do. <laughs> <laughs> Even with the main bodies having disappeared into ether, there are still several shards that house pieces of both Zodiac and Hydaelyn, since the latter sundered not only Zodiac and the world, but her, uh, herself too. There's also the timey-wimey stuff with Graha's original timeline still probably enduring and having gone through the Eighth Umbral Calamity and possibly even more calamity since Graha left that timeline a <gasps> hundred years ago. How likely do you think we will revisit these remaining dangling bits in the future? Will we someday see the return of both Hydaelyn and Zodiac? Oh, I hope now, not. is Hydaelyn sundered? Because, like, she seemed to not really be aware of what was going on in the first. Oh. Yes? She, uh, um... I don't think she was, because she has, like, her base of operations... And she can mm. she can touch all the other worlds in some way, I think. Yeah. Vaguely, but not... Well, actually, I don't even know if she can. Because she had to send Minfilia in her stead. Yes, that's what I thought. I can see Zodiac, how there are still, like, dangly bits of him left in the <laughs> other moons that's and true. the other shards. But, yeah. like, how sentient are they? Yeah, no, yeah. I she uh, Heidelin was not yeah the whole point is that Heidelin sundered Sodiark well, and the world and but not Zodiac, herself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I agree. Sodiark is still dangling around. There's some dangly bits the left of Sodiark. The only chance maybe is the part of him in the void because of the <clears throat> darkness there already. Mhm. Mm he could latch onto that, but I don't think I I don't think that could I I think back. they want yeah, Yoshi P made it very clear that he this was the end. Like, this story is mm -hmm. over. But if we're going to be, you know, an MMO leaves things, you know, always. So they might. I mean, it, it is, it is, um, the, the, it is undeniable that there's pieces of Zodiac still around. Mm hmm. I could definitely see... Well, I don't think they'll ever be, like, relevant in the sense that they may become, like, sentient. I can definitely see other villains, 
like considering they've talked about going to other shards as a possible story point in future expansions, using the sundered shards of Zodiac as like batteries in the same way that villains continued to use Nidhogg's eyes as batteries after he was defeated. Right. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Um, yeah, it'll definitely. I mean, it's a huge chunk of ether either way, isn't it? Mm. Yes. Um, we kind of talked about the timeline stuff last time, and that was a that was a ride. <laughs> I don't want to go back on. <laughs> but uh, I think we talked about. I think we talked about the timeline stuff in the post show. Oh, yes. sorry, that was a post show discussion. I guess. Okay. Um, I don't. I think I. I kind of don't want that. I don't want us to jump timelines. Because it just makes everything more messy. Once you start doing that, you are you can fuck up a lot, and it'll be very difficult Time. to like stay, you know, to keep track of everything. Are you talking about shard travel as jumping timelines, or are you talking about the Graha thing? We're talking about the Graha stuff. Graha's oh, original okay. timeline and oh, yeah. the eighth armor calamity. That has to be left there. We we can't go through this again. No, I don't think that's going to be relevant any further. He took the only means of traveling through timelines with him from that specific timeline and i don't see us having any reason to go back to that timeline mm -hmm. no yeah uh Graha doesn't even know if it exists anymore right we only know it does because of the tales from the twilight that was posted on the the yeah official website right um I guess I guess I'm reading chat right now. They're saying that maybe the pieces of Sodiar could dissipated when he died. That's true. That's a possibility. Could happen. Yeah. So maybe there's just nothing. But okay. Well, let's. No, the answer is no. <laughs> We're not going back to any of this. It's all over. Yeah. The book is closed. It's over. Um, <laughs> yeah. I don't. I guess that's that. Um, thank you, mm -hmm. uh, Trista. Um, next, uh, Mogmail. Uh, Coming in from Trinity Rain. Uh, hello, uh, speakers uh, from Cactor. Hello, speakers. Um, as I replay Endwalker, Thancred tells the Etherite lady that he cannot channel <laughs> Ether, and she claims this was actually made for people like you, which made me wonder can Garlians not teleport via Etherite? I know they have them in Garlemald, but I got the impression those were special or just there for us. Do Garlians like Lucia, Sid, Maxima have to hoof it everywhere? Thanks for any clarification you can give. Okay, so there is apparently a piece of law that explains that the gar the etherites specifically in Garlemald are attuned such that people without ether, like Garlians, can use them already, which also kind of defeats the purpose of them having a train line. <laughs> that's yes, true. yes, that's why the etherites look a little different. Um, that's mm -hmm. just some like gimped law to allow. They they had to do that. Yeah, they had Garlemald. to do that so we had could have etherites in Garlemald. In general, mm. though. A Garlean can't. No, they can't use Aeorcean use Etherites, for instance. No. Um, so, yeah. I mean, they they're, are... they're, they're incompatible. They have different frequencies, if you will, if you want to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's that. Um, yeah, they primarily use teleportation like that ring structure that is in Kate Westwind. That's, that's a throwback. I oh, yeah. True. True. Yeah, they have other things. They have their and they have airships. So yes, they do, like, and they have trains. The battle airships. They have trains. Airships, not the fastest method of transportation. No, even theirs. Theirs are pretty, pretty impressive. Though. Yeah, they're not the Ragnarok. <laughs> well, no, true. No. Um, yeah, but we we always heard that trains were like their their fastest, usual, their most reliable mode of transportation. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so there you go. Thank you. Have we uh, have we seen Garlean like boats? They don't have. Um, have we on seen the it in coast, maybe in Turncliff? Maybe. Well, we have no. We have to know they have them because remember the Limpsons allowed um like uh, oh, privateering yeah. against their ships. Yeah. But like we, I don't think we've ever seen one. I imagine them to be like. God, I wonder what they'd look Titanic like. Titanic battleships. Yeah, they do have a navy. We know that. Yeah, so they they're. And but also, their navy can't be that impressive. They're losing to like <laughs> limps and pirates. With wooden boats and pirates. Yeah. <laughs> um. That kind of shows how good the pirates of limps are, though. That they're actually it able does. to take like Carlian ships. They shouldn't. Uh, what do you mean shouldn't? No, they shouldn't. But apparently they, <laughs> yeah, they do. To. I mean, you know they shouldn't. <laughs> I mean, Garlemald doesn't have a dock. There's like Garlemald is a landlocked nation. 
Mm-hmm. It only has like ports as a result of expansion. Yeah. Yeah. Elsabad yeah. has only a southern coast, really. I imagine the others are mountains. Yes. Yeah. For the mm-hmm. most part. Yeah. Well, um, you wouldn't even want. I mean, the north's probably like Arctic, isn't it? If well, there is a coast there. Yeah. That's true. Um. Well, honestly, they don't really even need a navy, but apparently they have one. No, they travel. They obviously travel to. Um, it's easier to invade here, though, like Ghana as well, because they have an embassy there. Yeah, true. I, I don't mean, know. It's easier to invade if you live in a world that doesn't have airships. Maybe it's harder to land an airship if you're under fire. Like a, sh- I don't know. I don't know. I'm trying to like justify their navy. But I know <laughs> it's hard. It's um, much tech workers as well. Yeah, mm, I only just thought of this, and I was like. It's something you're not supposed to think about, I don't think. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, okay, well, there you go. Thank you, uh, Trinity. Uh, we have answered it. Uh, Garleans can tr- use the Garlean Aetherites, but not the Aeorcean. What? Assumedly, they cars as well. They have cars as well. They yes. do have cars, yes. Assumedly, Had. the Garleans could use the Aetherite in Old Charlian to at least get to Yedli Mad as well. Yeah. I guess. Because it's designed for people that can't there. manipulate ether. Yeah. They would be. True. But maybe that's the Garlean, maybe that's the Charlian goal to make etherites that anyone can use. Yeah. Possible. <laughs> uh We should be glad the Garleans weren't able to use all the etherites because that would make invasions I mean, very easy for them. I mean, it requires someone to, you can't. Send in a spy, allow. get the attunement yep. shit set up. But that only works for the spy. I don't think you can attune for other people. I don't think there's ever been a law explanation of someone attuning on behalf of someone else. If that was the case, Asinian would have allowed us to be able to teleport to Yedali Mad. I feel like there's yeah. been a situation where people have not attuned to an Aetherite and gone there. But that might be a... Uh, maybe this is 1.0 lore. So I'm, I'm not going to go there. <laughs> I'm not going there. Uh, all right. Um, that's, um, that's that. Uh, thank you, uh, Trinity. Uh, it's uh, send this mug mail, speakersxavi.com slash mug mail. We have to go into the great discussion where we're going to ask the question, how much does Azem know about us? Right. Uh, the great discussion. Um, how much does Azem know um, about, well, about everything, about the situation and about us? Mm-hmm. Um, Georgi, lead, uh, set mm-hmm. the stage for us. What is So the first yeah. thing we have to sort of question is like, did Vanar tell Azem about the events that happened at Elpis? Mm-hmm. And if not... What is he doing? I I have to ass- go on the assumption that Vanar did tell him. Yeah, yeah, I think. Or so. tell them. Tell them. Yeah. So Azem has. Yeah. Azem gave um, the Pandemonium man, who I can't remember the name of. Famous. Famous. Yeah, Seamus. Yeah. Um, that they were going to come and look at Pandemonium mm-hmm. with them. Yeah. Yes. But then, if I'm not there, look out for the Falling Star. Well, he said... The, the Azem decided against it, saying, I'll send someone else to... Yeah. To, yeah, look for a Falling Star for your assistance. Yes. Which is a big... I mean, that's us. So, surely they must have known then well, another possibility would be if not Vanar telling Azem like enough people exist knowing like hey there's a f- who's this familiar of yours running around Elpis mm. he could have they could have like like theorized something along the same lines simply because there's no way no no one's going to tell him that like there's a familiar claiming to be his right or theirs running around <laughs> <laughs> a facility designed to experiment with new like concepts. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Cuz obviously Azem's best buds with Hades and Hithlodius. Mm-hmm. But well they, they don't know anything about mind. this. Yeah, they got mind wiped. Yeah. So it could only have been Vanar 
or just word of mouth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's assume for now. I think that's more likely. Yeah. Because for now, wanted mm. plans involving us anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they may have just sort of said, by the way, there's a future you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you, you know, do you need to make use of them? They can come here. <laughs> <laughs> and then, well, then also, if that's the case, Vana had to have allowed, have told Azem that they probably, they can't be involved in the summoning of Hydaelyn. Because that would go against the timeline. Right. That that's is already true. established. Yes. And also, and assumedly also warned him, you can't be involved in the summoning of Zodiac either. Right. Well, yeah. yeah. Um, if there, we we talked about how we, this obviously puts Azem into uh, the current uh, story of um, the raid, um, the current and assumedly raid. the other raid that's coming up next. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, so th that's a quite exciting because if you think about it, th like we are never going to probably get a Sam in the main scenario anymore because that story, like we said earlier, is over. So it mm. makes sense that the mystery of a Sam will continue in the raid story and possibly also myths of a realm, or sorry, not myths of a realm, myths <laughs> of the realm. Um, uh, depending, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. Um, um, how yeah how when do you think will do you think sm will be a part of the raid let's just start with that do you think they'll be part the of the story men. yeah the current one the oh, uh, sorry 24 pandemonium. oh the current men pandemonium. the eight men um <clears throat> I, I think it's very possible that he won't actually appear in the eight men raid right or they okay it could just be a like just a way of shoehorning you into the storyline. Like, oh, I was expecting mm -hmm. a Zem. Oh, you look a bit like them. And they did say expect someone yeah. else. Yeah. I think any further information we get in it from a get about a Zem in the Pandemonium storyline will be relayed to us through Thanos in all likelihood. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um Right. Um Right. So um where okay so where are we going with this <laughs> where are we going with this Gyrgy? <laughs> oh also well the other question is then who it kind of relates to who the 12 are because like i mean azem in all likelihood has to be related to the formation yes. of the 12 yes but if we presume <laughs> if we presume that azem was not involved in the summoning of hydaelyn we also have to assume that our 12 were not the people that summoned Heidelin. That's is it a good possible? Point. Is it possible that d during the time uh, following what we know to be the when Azem rejected both the convocation and Vinar, he went in search of who he could trust to be the 12 as a lead as a way to guide the sundered following the sundering that Vinar had planned? Mm, yeah. So the twelve are like hide like Vanar's groupies. <laughs> perhaps. I mean I would more say say more say claim they're a Zem's groupies. Yeah, a Zem's groupies more like, yeah. Um because I say I'm gathering them. Well, yeah, but they're kind of on the Hydlin side of things, aren't they? Yeah, or of what? course. They're team Hydalin yeah. for sure. Yeah, or, they're team mm, Hydalin. Yes. Or are they Do neutral? They ever yeah, are they neutral? Like, are they ever shown a, like really working with Hydaelyn? No, like, I don't remember any connection in lore of the Twelve to the Hydaelyn. Always been this weird separation between the Twelve and Hydaelyn, because most people, yeah, there there is no mention of Hydaelyn in relation to the Twelve. So, um, well, most Aeosians believe in the Twelve, but don't they don't necessarily know Hydaelyn know about is a thing. Yeah, mm. they well, they know. Well, do we know if they knew that their planet was called Hydaelyn up until recently? If so, I mean, I that might like be I've the only reference. Of, I feel like some of the city-state leaders have referred to Hydaelyn, and it would be strange if they yeah. referred to it without like, yeah. that so, information being more publicly known. Yeah, because yeah, cause we've heard the city... Yeah, yeah, you're right. We've heard yeah. people refer Hydaelyn's to the planet as Hydaelyn. Because so, Aeos is the realm. Yeah, the realm is... Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Um, so they they know that, but I guess they don't know where it comes from. That's just, I mean, it's like mm -hmm. we would start questioning why Earth is called Earth. <laughs> like, why is it Earth? Is it a is it a giant god? <laughs> it doesn't make any mm. sense to them. Heidelin is just the planet. Um, yeah, yeah. So yeah, no, I think they're separate. They might just be neutral, a neutral party. Um, okay. So, so if they're if as M is part of the twelve mm -hmm. and the twenty four man, are we fighting them or how do you think that's going to involve the twelve and especially as M? Like, are they going to be bosses or is the story going to be like mm. the creation myth and we just go through the legend I, of it or the myths of it? I feel as if it, we have to fight the twelve. It's the right amount of bosses for a twenty four man raid. Well, exactly. But what if it is, yeah, see, that's the thing. Like, the formula is just too perfect not to be just fighting the 12. I kind of, but why are we fighting them? They challenge, like, they're testing us. They're testing us? Our gods are testing like, us? Like, do the 12, I mean, that's what Heidelin did. It's true. It's true. Yeah. Like, it, the 12 sort of asking, like, do we still need to exist? Oh, it would be cool if it was, like, the 12 have, like, different, like, their trials. So they're making, like, bosses in, like, their own image. That would be yeah. cool. Yeah. Like, some of them, like, you, it could be that you fight some of them directly and some of them do summon things that, like, represent them as well. Yeah. I could have, like, but then their own there's unique a slight arenas. issue in that, like, the main example is Rolga. Mm hmm With Ramu. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's that big link there where That's he's interesting like, he actually is with the 12. For some reason. Is that it, th mm. that has been a long standing theory that Ramu is Ralgar. Um mm -hmm. but Ramu and Ramu it can't like be classified as a like a proper primal. There's a lot of stuff with Ramu that's interesting. But I mean he yeah. doesn't look If so, he's the only one of the 12 that's currently about, I think. That's we know about that we've seen mm -hmm. if he is ralgar we obviously don't know if he is that's ridiculous though there's just an actual one of the 12 has been wandering around well that was crazy well, back when we learned about it the first time well, yeah, i don't yeah. even know it might also ramu might be a warped like version of yeah. that myth mm -hmm. as well yeah, it might yeah. not be the original ralgar at this that, point that's true no that's ralgar true. has seems to have like multiple variations but he's I mean, like Zem has multiple variations well, yeah so. that's true yeah. but even so that if he is at least if he's even based on ralgar it's the closest we can we've ever been to like one of the actual 12 so there must be some mm -hmm. piece maybe the fact that he's like j just like the way that he is must maybe there's a little kernel of of um, Ralgar in there. Mm -hmm. Ralgar was... Wait, Althic is the oldest, isn't he? Like, that's the father. I think Althic is the original, yeah. Yeah. In, okay. the, in the creation mm -hmm. lore. Yeah. Um, I feel like we have to explore the creation myth as well, because I don't see how, like... With our understanding of who a Zem is, isn't right. it weird that it didn't start with a Zem? <laughs> yeah, a it is. I think a Zema is it's so random. To me, that we're like it's Zema like, of all things. Yeah, why did they decide that we would be a Zema or like the equivalent of a Zema? Mm. I don't know. It's maybe we won't go through the myth though. There's also the heavens and hells of the different elements that they all occupy. Mm -hmm. oh, but I feel like we have to ask them. Like if we have the opportunity well, to talk to any of the twelve, like what's all this about? Yeah, what's this mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I. Yeah, it's. <laughs> Don't bring up the Oshon theory, yeah, Prince. Yeah, we Tom. are Oshon. No. <laughs> hey, Hades refers to us refers to our power as that of the warden in his trial of the dying gasp as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, that's true. But Azem in the uh, online story is a traveler, is a wanderer. They go around helping people. In various locales, then mm -hmm. they're never bound to one place. They don't have a specific duty. Everyone right. else on the seats had a duty. A Zem, the seat of a Zem, or the current one. Mm -hmm. So, are you Oshan. claiming that the are you claiming that the twelve are related to the convocation now? Well, a Zem is a seat, isn't it? It is. Yeah, it is. But there are more than twelve seats. Yeah. And this is the, where it gets really tricky because. Well, are there just twelve members from the convocation? Like, uh, I always felt like it would be members of the convocation on one side, at least. Because why would Azem pick those people? 
Like, surely there must there must be something special about them since they've decided, like, you yeah. will lead the Sundered. There, there are un, there are Asians that were members of the Convocation that we have not addressed yet. Right. But it's possible that he maybe plucked one or two of them to join his his 12, or yeah. their 12. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah true. All right, goodbye. Goodbye, I'll be right <laughs> um, Don't acknowledge that. <laughs> so... So the Hydaelyn people mm -hmm. on that side, the, the Hydaelyn summoners, how many were there? I don't think we have a number. It wasn't 12. I know that much. Was it not 14? I don't think we have a specific number. The no. only thing we have was that vision that was provided to us by oh, the yeah. concept crystal. And that's not even necessarily like an accurate representation of what occurred. Right. Um, and if... Yeah. Um, I was just going to find the creation myth. And but... the people who summoned Zodiac, that was the four. That was the complication, but it required the yeah. sacrifice of the ether of many other people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or it, I don't know if it required right. the belief of other people as well. Like, I don't know if we fully understand, like, we know the complication led to the summoning of Zodiac, but were other people involved? I think they all believed, and that's why most of them were sucked into being part of him. And, like, where did they go? Because, like, I know that the scene of uh, Vanar walking through, like, like after we leave Elpis, that scene of Vanar walking forward. Like, I know that it's it shows the scene of Emmett Selk, like, see, talking to Hithlidaeus, and then Hithlidaeus walks off. Like, was this, what, was there this, like, this, this vat where they sent all the people that will be sacrificed for Zodiac? Mm-hmm. Was that a separate room from where the people that were involved in the actual summoning would go? Mm. Was it just random? Were you just walking down the street and then your ether got called? You know, like, oh, I kind of well. was random. I think people had to like willingly also, sacrifice. Like, themselves. Yeah, because also you have to be like, oh, I am part of this gang now because cl clearly the twelve decided to like stick together. Otherwise, it'd be weird if they just got. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, the the cut. Yeah, we have to also mention that the cutscene we're talking about, where we see the people sacrifice themselves. Yeah, that's not accurate. That is figurative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I was going to look at the creation myth, but <laughs> boys, it's a long fucking thing. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah no, I know that. it's long. It's a whole page. <laughs> yes. I like that it's a page. It's a page of a book that shows a page. But it is interesting what it says at the top. It says creation myth in Eorzea has taken on co countless forms over the ages. One prominent astrologian and theologian, Lufon of Charlian, uh, spent oh. his academic career studying the overlap in these renditions and has compiled what he claims is the definite, uh, definite, definitive tale. So. The, he will be this? the NPC we meet for this. Yeah, I was going to say, is he still? Yeah. Is this person still alive? Or oh, I mean, that's interesting. It might not be. I mean, even if it's not them, it could be a descendant. Yeah, I it hope doesn't have to be, to be the original related. person. Yeah. Um, I'll I'll read the first, just the the first three lines because this is how apparently the world came to be, which is interesting now in retrospect. In the beginning, there was neither light nor darkness, only the whirl. And it was not until Althic emerged thence in his nakedness did time take its first step forward. With him, the keeper also carried weight, and with weight were the realms of land and firmament defined. It's interesting that it actually mentions that he's naked. Because I feel like you would if the world is sundered and you're like brought back. Like you would be mm -hmm. naked, wouldn't you? So, okay. That is true. Was, yeah. In regards to the sundering, is it possible that like Heidelin knew that when the sundering occurred, there would need to be guides and like, or like Vanar knew that there would need to be guides. And mm -hmm. the, so she sort of either Azem independently or Azem in, in agreement with Vanar set out to pick the people that they thought should be the guides of the new world. Because mm. Heidelin is kind of hands off. Yes. In terms of the development of the Sundered Worlds. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Yeah. yeah, maybe. I think. I don't I don't think you can take the creation myth at hand, though, because it does. No. 
Yes. Uh, it does gender as Zayma as female, and also as Zayma and Menfina are sisters. Mm-hmm. So we would also That's have like a sister. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But then, unfortunately, it does gender Oshon as well, so... Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, all of them are gendered. I yeah. mean... And we also have to accept that we also have to acknowledge the Azim and uh, Nama myth in the Far East as well. That's yeah, yeah. That Azim is male. That's interesting. That's that true. true. Yeah. Um, but their version of Menfina is still female. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's. Uh... But then I suppose that's what. Yeah, they just get switched up. So uh, yeah, they could be either. Really, I don't think it matters. No. Um, um, also, you have to remember this. I mean, this myth was also made. I mean, well, <laughs> before Endwalker as well. So uh, you know, th- th- there's that to keep in mind as well. Um, mm-hmm. so. I feel as if they can't completely throw this away in a in a raid series that's based around the twelve, though. That's true. I even agree. if it, yeah, even if it's not like accurate or true, like I feel like there are aspects of it that have to be like to a certain extent touched upon yeah in whatever we're going to do as part of the 24 man raid yeah um yeah there's um it's interesting the the creation myth ends with how they disappear from our world which is and with the advent of the 12th and final god uh, who, which was the 12th uh mother of life uh who gave the last one uh the last one was... Nald Thal. Dual-aspected Nald Thal yeah, was the Nald final Thal god. Was the last god. And with mm-hmm. the advent of the twelfth and final god was the pantheon complete. But before they could call an end to their toil, they first required a realm in which they could reside and watch over their myriad creation. To, to this end, they created the seven heavens, and to there did they finally retreat, bequeathing rule of Eorzea to mankind. Mm-hmm. That is interesting. I mean, it's they would go somewhere else, I guess. Uh, yeah, maybe they went to the Far East to go make that myth up. <laughs> <laughs> well, what might have happened is that if I mean they're real, if I mean I think we can conf- Well, we can't really confirm still that the twelve are real, but let's go off the assumption no, that they were real. Assuming that they are. Yeah. Um, I mean, <clears throat> Emmett Selk specifically talks about them having an yes, identity. He does. So they I have think to we exist say, in some they, sense of the world. Yeah. Uh, they may have, because we know the Ellison claim that they were the first people because they were the, you know, the twelve. I don't remember exactly what they say. But... Maybe they, maybe they saw images from the unsundered world. And like, they, they look like us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they're tall. Um, yeah. But they might have been residing in Eorzea, and then the tale spread and then changed, as tales do, and uh, when it came to mm-hmm. the Far East, and it was just adapted. Um, I mean, Azim is a wanderer. It is very possible yeah. that, like, as as Azem wandered across the world, different versions of creation myth were spawned as a result of, assumedly, Azem doing things to help the Sundered people, like, get back on their feet after what would have been a probably a very perplexing event. Yeah. Well, did they go through every world, every shard? Well, that's a good question. I don't know. I would. I mean, they would. They... I mean, they would have been Sundered. Yeah, they would. We know that Azem was yeah, sundered yeah, because yeah, we yeah, are a yeah. shard of them. Yeah. That's, That's interesting. Did they all form poss- the twelve in all of the shards? Well we don't Norbrand doesn't Well they might mu- have they might the not have very they might not have a similar creation myth. It's possible that like so there is a memory crystal that is involved as part of the Pandemonium raid. Perhaps Azem and the members of their twelve created memory crystals such that they would be able to remember at least an ex- a little bit of mm-hmm. what happened in the sundered world or the unsundered world such that they knew what occurred and so they could guide the people of every shard. Right. Yeah. That's probably true. Yeah. Because Spe- Emmett Selk just chucked all of them around in you know in his madness. So they must have had a purpose. Yeah. Um, in his broken Amorot. So, yeah, they're probably, yeah... Um, so every warrior of light, then, like Ardbert, and there'll be one from every shard. Yeah. They're all shards of Azem. Mm-hmm. Yes. 
So presumably there are, there, at least there is also the others. shard of every other. M- and Mela, you mentioned the heavens and hells. I think you might mm-hmm. be onto something because there are there's a heaven and hell for each element, which adds up to mm-hmm. twelve. So mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, so there's the he- the hell and heaven of fire, and they all have the twelve deities tied to them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. heaven of fire is Nald Fal, uh, uh, and the hell of fire. Wait, maybe that's just him. Oh no, no, no sorry. What? <laughs> I don't know. It says uh, Nald Thal. Oh, uh, endless city built by Nald Thal from the golden bricks fired in the heat of Azamus' sun. That's the hell and heaven of fire. The hell and heaven of water. Uh, Nemea melted a star to which Thaliak added essence of knowledge. Uh, the hell and heaven of wind, um, a mountain range atop which, which Oshan looks out upon an endless sea ruled by Limlane. The hell and heaven of ice is uh, carved with uh, a frozen moonbeams. What? In the center of this heaven rises a lofty palace of ice, ice made of frozen moonbeams and carved with the Fury's own spear. Here reside epic heroes and gallant knights. Uh, Valhalla. This doesn't actually have a tw- another person other than Halone uh, mentioned in it. Interesting. The hell and heaven of lightning. Ah, um, oh, Byragot. Built by Byragot, Byragot with metal forged from a comet and powered by Ralgar's leaven bolts. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the hell and heaven of earth. Uh, Nofika planted a single sapling which Ulfic instantly uh, coaxed to maturity by bending time itself. Um, who's missing from this? Well, there's a seventh hell and a seventh who's heaven. The other? Oh who's yeah, what is the seventh who? one? Who? Uh, they even say well, the creation one... they created seven heavens. Yeah. The one missing would have been the other ice aspected, like, god. Men... Menfina? Menfina? I guess it's Menfina is missing. She's ice. Yeah, there's six lower heavens and six. Well, mo- isn't it made of moonbeams? She is. Oh yeah, she is a moon. So that's probably yeah, yeah. So that's probably how they mentioned Menfina, even though she doesn't get the direct name drop. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but what is uh, the seventh? Just... Well, yeah, there's a seventh hell and a seventh heaven. One suffering and eternity in payment. Okay, let me read about the heaven. Okay, we'll just we'll have time. We'll read this one. This might be relevant <laughs> to the myth uh, myths uh, of the realm. Every god and yeah. goddess of the twelve is associated with one of the six controlling elements. When the deities deemed their work on Eorzea complete, they proceeded to create the firmament. The result being six astrally aligned heavens, aspected to each of the six elements, and a final seventh heaven to rule them all. Oh my God, uh. Lord of the Rings. However. A residual product of these heavens were six similarly aspected hells, ruled by an all-encompassing, umbrally aligned seventh hell. The six lower heavens are represented in the sky by six constellations, star formations, which astrologians also perceive as as gates that, when opened, can allow a person to become attuned with the heavens and manipulate their ether. These constellations revolve around the pole star, which is believed to be the gate to the seventh and final heaven. Oh. While some so sect, uh, is that the? Do they talk about it in the astrologian quest? Oh, Probably. It rings some bell. Is that supposed to be like the north star of uh, like yeah. Pydalon or Etheris, whatever? Uh, while some sects of the twelve wor- of twelve worship have been, uh, let me start over. While some sects of twelve worship have different views of the afterlife. Most believe that the righteous are promised a place in the heavens, while sinners are doomed to an eternity of punishing trials in the hells. A belief made popular by uh, a famous theologian and playwright of the Sixth Astral Era states that upon an evil man's death, he will fall to a hell that corresponds to the sins he committed in his lifetime. Once suffering an eternity in payment for these sins, he must journey through the remaining five upper hells and witness the sins of his brothers before finally arriving at the gate of the seventh hell, where his heart will be weighed. If it is heavy with sorrow and repentance for what he has done, he will be sent to the heavens, but if it remains light, he will be admitted to the seventh hell, where he will suffer forevermore. Wow. That's fucked. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, that could actually I'm make for a pretty a... epic raid, though. Yeah. Well, I'm making a prediction that the final one is going to be called the Seventh Heaven. 
yeah. the final part of the 24 men reign. Oh, and we'll fight Tifa. <laughs> In Italy. All right, well, that's... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, anything else to add? Um, um, where do you think the raid will start? And where do you think the first part of the raid will be? The 24 men raid. Hmm. Maybe... It would be weird for it to start at the, like, the Sanctum. <laughs> But that's the only thing we have that's, that's like the own, yeah, tied the to the twelve. It's the own, yeah. Um, mm. Maybe there's a reason it's located there because it just appeared, didn't it? Yeah, like the this the umbral the calamity sort of brought it back. Like it was forgotten somehow uh, for like a very well, long time. I think time. it wasn't forgotten. I thought it was like covered by like the green wrath. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So no oh, that's what it was. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Just like Amdapur. It's the same. Yeah, just like Amdapur. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that's the only thing I can think about right now. Otherwise, it'll be something, like, just stupid. Like, oh, in Limsa, there's a quest. Or, like, in Gridania. Maybe in Gridania, since yeah. the Sanctum is in the well, Shroud. I th but... Honestly, I think that it will start in Charlian. Oh, yeah, Charlian, yeah. They'll find, like, a tome, and they'll be like, ooh, <laughs> we found meet, some information. They'll meet the creation myth, man. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And if he's still alive. Um, then... But it's specifically very related to Eorzea, and Charlian is not part of Eorzea. That's true. Yeah. The yeah, the creation myth literally yeah mentions Eorzea, which is weird. Uh, like, this, yeah. When did they adopt? When did Charlians adopt the belief in the twelve? Well, they do. They do have um, the Thaliac. That's their That's patron. Deity. Yeah, but that did that happen before they left? Like, <laughs> I don't know. When did they adopt their belief in Thaliac? <sighs> I don't know. Well, maybe that's part of it. Yeah, maybe we'll find out more Charlie in history, and maybe they have a slightly different thought process, or maybe their version of events is different from some of the Eorzean ones. Mm -hmm. And we'll get a bit of background on that. Yeah, um, I don't know. I can't even imagine how they would decide to order it. Like if we fought all 12, 12 Well, yeah, it has to be they before decide? they. It had to be before they made new Charlian because. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be weird. Because there's so many things that, like, just have, like, Thaliac, like... I mean, there's a fucking giant statue of Thaliac in old Charlie. <laughs> yes. Yes. I also, you know, I think I think it's just... It mentions Eorzea, but I... Th I mean, New Charlian... Oh, sorry, Old Charlian is kind of Eorzea adjacent. So they've sort of just... <laughs> <laughs> they adopt... They, we all adopted this faith. Uh, for some reason, it just mentions Eorzea. I think this book... That myth specifically was written when Eorzea just meant the whole world. Because I remember Maybe. that time when we would just say Eorzea because that was the world. That was all we had anyways. So Eorzea was the game world. That might be why. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I wonder if they'll revisit and like change some of the creation myth now. Because it's weird that it mentions a realm and not the, the world. I think there has to be. I, I wouldn't call it retconning because it is just a myth, but I think there's going to be some serious rewriting of what we know about the 12 as of, yeah. it, as of right now. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, all right. Uh, that's it, everyone. Uh, I think that's uh, that's our great discussion. Thank you, everyone, for watching. The, we'll be back uh, next week. Uh, same time, same place. Remember to follow on Twitter at SpeakersXV, twitch.tv slash SpeakersXV, and youtube.com slash SpeakersXV. Exclamation Discord in chat if you want to join our Discord server, if you want watching on demand. The link is in the description. Um, remember to send us MogMail, SpeakersXV.com slash MogMail. We need MogMail, so please. Uh, um... Yeah, stay tuned for the post show. We'll be answering questions from the syndicate. We'll see you there. Goodbye. Bye.